This session we're going to um, look at uh, the use of a unit step function in writing out um, a, uh, the distributed load in a beam on a beam uh, anywhere along that beam. So we have one equation for uh, the distributed load across the whole beam. And we're going to use um, a unit step function that looks like this on the here on the front page is, is that when you're at x equal to uh, or less than a, the value of this function, which is right here, is zero. And then once x gets beyond a, or gets turned on at a, that value is one. And that's what the zero is here. So if this, for instance, was a value of six, then when x was equal to 10, we would have caret brackets 10 minus 6 to the 0 power, 4 to the 0 power, which is 1. So we're going to use that in order to uh, get the distribution of the W uh, distribution equation for the entire beam. Well, this one's really quite simple because the W of x here is equal to minus 20 downward. Uh, and that's it, uh, pounds per foot. And that's good anywhere along that four foot length of that beam. However, the, our real situation is this one, in which we have two feet here that uh, has our 20 pounds per foot, and then we have another two feet that doesn't have it there. So I could start this off then and say, well, look, um, well, uh, if I say x is less than or equal to 0 or less than or equal to, to 2 feet, that's true. And then I'd have to say w of x equals 0 for x between and including 2 foot and 4 feet. Perfectly uh, fine mathematically. We're going to find it's going to be a little bit easier for us in the long run if we know how to do these distributions and in the next video uh, the shear and moment equations and only having one of them per uh, beam that does it for the entire beam. So it replaces really the shear and bending moment diagrams if you will and we'll be able to do uh, quite a bit with that. So if I put that back on here uh, that's not the, ca the situation we have, so what I have to do is by superposition is come and put an, the opposite loading down here on the bottom so those two cancel out. And uh, then I'm, I'm able to uh, figure out what that, uh, let me take a peek here, yep. figure out what I've got for a distributed load distribution. Well, uh, again, what I have and get the right buttons here. I've got W of X is equal to minus 20. That's the one that's on the top and it's that way all the way across. And down on the bottom I'm going to have a plus 20 pounds per foot and that gets turned on when we get to 2 feet to the zero power. So that equation is good for the entire beam. You see, when x gets to like 3 feet, then what happens? This n is 1 to the 0 power, which is 1, so I'll end up with a w equal to 0, which is exactly what we want. Well, a couple other things that we can do is, for instance, here. I have a uh, now a distributed load that's not a constant. So I'm going to need this slope here. And that slope, or m, is equal to uh, 20 pounds per foot divided by 2 feet, which is 10 pounds per foot squared. Kind of odd. Now, you see in the first part of this beam here, this is really where A starts, um, there is no distributed load. So even though I got X here, starting over here at the left, the first part of that is zero. 
But when I get to A, then I do. It's a minus. Now what in the world do I do? Well, I've got the slope, minus 10, and I now have right to here. I want to know what that W is, right there. I want this height, that one, right there, that one. I want that. <laughs> if I can get a hold of it, there we go. I want that one. So my X is coming all the way out right to that one, right there. And I bring down a line here. So what's this distance from here to here? Well, that's x minus 2. So my run, if you will, the horizontal part of this is x minus 2. And I multiply that times the slope. So I put in the bracket here. And I actually now have it to the first power because you see this is pounds per foot squared and I need uh, a length of feet here to come out with W sub X. So you see it's the unit load function to the next power treats it just the same except now it's to the first power. So when X is equal to 1, uh, WX is equal to 0. When X is equal to 3, it's going to be equal to uh, 10. And when x is equal to 4, I'll have that inside term is going to be a plus 2, the first power. So I'm going to have a minus 20, which is exactly what I've got over here on the left-hand end. So we will uh, do some more with uh, uh, shear and bending moment equations on the next one.